Let's talk about the difference between toxic masculinity and good men, because there's definitely a difference. And I don't think this conversation happens enough and it should, because it's pretty obvious and it's pretty straightforward that I'm going to use the word conflate, that people conflate this idea that yes, there are horrible men out there that are abusive or absent or dismissive, etc. We We know that type and that stereotype. We know that. We're familiar with it. But I'm going to tell you something. As far as me and as far as my male friends, I'll tell you what we're all like. We are faithfully married to our wives. We are good, loving fathers. We're hardworking and we're ambitious. We have a good, strong sense of our identity. We have a strong moral code. We're, we're also good at, at finance. Those are things we all have in common because we tend to end up being friends with people who are similar to us. So that's my world. That's the world that I live in. I'm not connected with these men that would be classified as toxic masculinity. So I think what we're seeing, and, and, and I've mentioned it, like, for example, even with Trump winning this election, 2024, I think a lot of that had to do with good men felt dismissed being categorized as toxic men when in reality we're good i'm a good man and so are the men in my own life that i know and that i'm that i'm close with and that i'm friends with here's what it reminds me of so and i i will admit this to you this is me being vulnerable and real with you uh, one of the complexes i've always dealt with is i'm going to call it the Older brother of the prodigal son complex. But here's what I mean. If you're familiar with in the Bible, Jesus told the parable about the prodigal of the, the story of the prodigal son. Well, in that story, to me, just as relevant was not the prodigal son, but instead he had an older brother. And that older brother did everything right. He did everything his father asked him to do. And at the end of the story, when the prodigal son comes back, who was rebellious and was squandered all his money on that, the... The, the, the older brother's like, well, what am I, chopped liver? I mean, I, I've done everything right. Where's, where's the party for me? So I'm being real with you. That's the complex I live in. I, I, I know it's a bit erroneous, but the way my brain works is, again, I have a strong moral code and, and values and, and, and rules that I live by. And ultimately, I'll tell you, the shortcut is, it's just that whatever the seven deadly sins are, I make sure I master all seven of those. That's really what it comes down to. Look up the seven daily sins of the Bible. But I feel that if I do everything the right way, at the very least, I shouldn't be punished. At the very least, I shouldn't be demonized, and maybe I shouldn't be marginalized. And I think that's what we've seen in this, this election this year, 2024. There's a lot of men who feel like I do. We actually are good men, but specifically a lot of us, if we're straight white men specifically, then we're automatically part of the problem. We're, we're toxic. And I think that we just don't appreciate that. It's not that to say that I'm offended by that, but it's just clearly wrong. And so somebody like me who, honestly, I, I have never identified as being political up until now. Now I'm thinking, well, there is a group that does value hardworking men who love their families and love their wives. Yeah, okay, I'll choose that group because, uh, yeah, that seems to be the value system. Uh, family, uh, hard work, uh, believing in yourself and being ambitious and having goals. But as far as just lumping me into a category of, of the worst uh, example of, of what men are and assuming that I'm the same, that's that's the narrative issue. And that ultimately helped get Trump elected in 2024. And I will say it, the Democrats will be struggling to win us back. And when I say that, please know that a month ago, I was not decided on who I was voting for. I would have just as easily voted for Harris. I honestly would have. And I was, I was thinking about it. But then I started, it started hitting me after she didn't show up on the podcasters, Joe Rogan, Dave Ramsey, Dave Vaughn, and Trump did. That's a subtle message, but it sent the message to me that 
okay, I am a good man. I'm, I'm not a toxic male. I'm a good man. And I will not be punished for that. Instead, I have a group to belong with. Your thoughts belong right here.